Hello everyone and welcome back to Rice Fix. And in this video, I will show you how to replace a Royal Enfield Classic headlight casing. So it's going to be a very interesting video, guys. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, then see that you consider subscribing and press the bell icon so that you will get a notification when I release my next video. And like this, you will never miss any of my videos. So without any further ado, let's get the video started. So here, first only, I would like to tell you that before you begin this job, you should be done removing your front tire and front mudguard completely and you should be also done taking out your headlight trim assembly now i have done a video on both of these topics already i will put the link of those videos in the end screen once you are done watching this video it is very important for you guys to go and watch those videos as well because whatever that i'm going to show you now in this video is after those two videos so the first thing that you will have to do once you are done taking your tire out your mudguard out and your headlight trim assembly out is you will have to separate your handlebars from the casing now on this handlebar there will be two bolts on top here so take a 17 mm socket and take these two bolts out so once you are done taking these two bolts out under the handlebar there are two nuts so take a 13 mm socket and take both these nuts out completely so once you are done taking these two nuts out this plate on which these bolts and nuts were there now pull this plate out once this plate comes out separate the handlebars from the casing now keep these handlebars on the chassis or put a cloth on the fuel tank and keep it on the fuel tank so let's move on the next thing that you will have to take out is this stainless steel cover of the parking lights so take a screwdriver take this screw out and remove both this stainless steel covers of the parking lights once you are done taking out both these covers the next thing that you will have to do is take out the side lights from both the sides now you will say why you have to take out the side lights to remove this casing so you will have to watch the entire video first it is not that easy to take out this casing now behind the side light there will be a nut here so take a 13 mm socket and take this nut out completely once you take this nut out completely your side light if you pull it it will come out easily like this so like this you will have to repeat the same process on the other side side light as well so once you are done taking out the side lights from both the sides the next thing that you will have to do is you will have to take out the plate which holds the number plate on the back side of that plate there will be a rr unit so that plate you will have to take out now so take a 13 mm socket and on the back side of this plate there will be two nuts take these two nuts out completely once you are done taking these two nuts from one side go on the other side and take out the two nuts from the other side as well so once you are done taking all these nuts out this plate of yours you will have to shake and wiggle a little bit and take it out from this front side completely and as you can see here there is a rr unit behind this plate then you will have to come on the top side of the casing and on your key lock there will be a nut so take a 27 mm socket and remove this key lock nut then you will have to take a screwdriver then you will see there is a big screw on top of the shock absorber on the casing this holds the shock absorber in place this fat screw you will have to take out now completely now there will be a similar screw on the other side as well so so that screw also you will have to take out completely so once you are done taking out both the screws the next thing that you will have to do is this parking lights of which the stainless steel plate we have taken out already now how to replace the bulb that i will show you quickly in this video now if you pull the rubber then you can take this glass out then you can access the bulb just pull the bulb and your bulb will come out like this you can replace the bulb of this parking lights now i will take the entire wire assembly out so unplug the parking lights and pull the parking lights out from this side completely this thing will have to repeat on the other side as well unplug the wire and then pull the bulb and wire assembly from the top side once you take out both of this you will have to take a 30 mm socket and in the middle of the casing there will be a big bolt this bolt you will have to take out now completely there will also be a visor here so keep both of this in a safe place then if you come down here you will see a allen key bolt so take a allen key and take this bolt out completely now while taking out this bolt you will have to be very careful it should not slip that is the reason why i am banging this allen key with a hammer so that it goes inside properly if this allen key doesn't go inside of that bolt properly and if you rotate it then it can slip and give you a rounded bolt and if that happens then it will become very difficult for you to take out this bolt so take a allen key like this hammer it inside and in a relaxing way rotate the bolt and take it out completely so once you're done taking out this bolt before this video started i had already told you that you will have to take the tire and mudguard out completely now how to take that out i have already made a video on that the link of that video Video, i will put in the end screens you can later go and watch that video now as you must have noticed there is no tire and mudguard on this bike now because i have taken it out completely first only now the next thing that you will have to do is pull down this fork assembly a little bit why you have to pull that down that i will tell you now in this video so take a vice plier and you will have to hold the shock absorber here and you will have to rotate it like this because this shock absorber is threaded to the casing it is like a bolt inside the casing that is the reason why you will have to turn it like this many times to separate it 
from the casing. So here my one shock absorber is now completely separated from the casing. Now like this you'll have to turn the other shock absorber as well and separate it totally from the casing. Now here both of my shock absorbers are completely separated from the casing now. Now while taking this out your, your fork bearing balls can drop. So be cautious while taking this out and keep it safely. Once you separate that from the casing, all the wires, the plugs which are there inside the casing, the speedometer cable and all, all that you will have to disconnect now. As you can see here, this is my speedometer cable connection. I will take this cable out and keep it in a safe place. Now inside of this remains only two things, which is the speedometer and the amp meter. So here my casing is now totally separated from the bike. Now I will separate both the meters from this casing. So take a screwdriver like this and pry this amp meter out. This is only pressed inside. If it is not coming out, then spray a WD-40 spray and try to pry it out. Once it comes out a little bit, you will have to push it from the inside with your thumb. And once you push it for a while, your amp meter will come out easily like this. As you can see here, you can now keep it in a safe place. Now I will take out the speedometer. To take out the speedometer, you will need a 22 mm socket. Put the socket in place and take out the nut which is there on the speedometer. So here comes out my nut. So once you are done taking out this nut, take out the plate which is holding the speedometer and keep it in a safe place. Once you take that out, your speedometer will easily come out on the other side like this. Now if you want, you can replace this with a new one or put the same thing back. Now from where you had taken out the amp meter, there will be a rubber packing like this. Now don't lose this, keep it in a safe place. Now I'm going to paint this casing and after that I will be putting all the things back. So here I'm done painting my casing. Now I will start to put everything back. The, so the first thing what I will do is I will put the parking lights in position. The next thing what I'll do is I will put the speed speedometer back in place. The speedometer you will have to slide it in carefully like this. It should not touch the paint otherwise your paint can get chipped off. So put it back carefully. Then put the plate which was holding the speedometer. Then put back the nut which you had taken out. The next thing that you will have to put back is the amp meter. Now I have already put that rubber packing on top of the meter. So put some grease on the connections of the amp meter. Put some grease on the rubber packing as well. Now wherever that amp meter will slide in put some grease on that as well so that it can slide in easily. Then put the amp meter in position and push it inside. So here goes my amp meter in position. Then you will have to take these two rubber packings. It is of the holes where your cables and wire harness go inside of the casing. You will have to put this rubber on these two holes on both the sides. Once you are done putting those back, you will have to place the casing on top of the bike like this now. And once you place that, you will have to slide in the fork and the shock assembly inside of the casing. Now while putting this back, you will have to be extremely careful. By this time, there should be balls inside of the bearing. They can fall out. So tell somebody to keep a hand on top of the casing like this otherwise this casing can come up and fall as well and there are already balls inside of the bearings so those balls should not fall when you are tightening the shock absorbers if you don't put this back carefully and if the balls fall then you will have to take this entire thing out completely and put the balls back properly and put the entire thing back so this is a very important part and you will have to be very careful here now how to replace the bearing balls i will make a separate video on that if you want that video then see that you comment below and let me know so before you put back your fork inside completely see that you rotate and tighten both these shocks to the same amount and fit them inside the casing and once you tighten both these shocks completely you will have to slide the fork assembly on top now and you will have to be very careful just slide it on top easily like this and once it comes in position then immediately put the center bolt back which we had taken out from top of the casing and tighten it properly once you tighten it properly we had taken out the two big screws from the casing put both those screws back and tighten them then you will have to come down here and you will have to put back the allen key bolt i had forgotten to put this bolt back and i put back the handlebars already but this bolt you will have to put before putting on the handlebars that's why i want to show this to you first in this video once you put that back put your handlebar in position put the plate back and put back the two bolts and two nuts which you had taken out and tighten them properly now you will have to put back your lock so put back the lock in position once you put that in position the ring nut which we had taken out from the lock that you will have to tighten now properly once you tighten that all the plugs and wires which you had disconnected inside your casing all those things you will have to connect back now connect the speedometer cable connect back the amp meter plug all the wires which are crossing through this casing like the clutch cable all these things you will have to pass through your casing now and connect everything back and in the end you will have to put back the stainless steel cover which we had taken out from the parking lights now put it back and put back the screw that holds it now do this on both the sides after this you will have to put back your headlight dome assembly on which 
I have already made a video. I will put the link of that video in the end screens now. You can go there and watch that video. So I'm hoping that this video was useful to you. If you found this video useful, then see that you like and share with your friends and family. And if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, then see that you subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that you will not miss any of my future videos. Till then, this is Raisin Ranani signing out. Until we meet again.